Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. Uh, today what I want to talk about is magnetism and demagnetizing a watch and what happens when a watch is magnetized. Now basically there are three things that can happen to a watch. Uh, one, they can speed up. Uh, this happens when the, the hairspring is magnetized and certain parts of it uh, uh, bond together, make it shorter, which will speed it up. Um, another thing that can happen, and this happened to me, it seems lots, lots more, is one of the other parts, usually around the escapement, uh, becomes magnetized and your watch slows down. Now, a third thing that can happen is that it can tie up the whole works. I mean, it can just come to a stop and it won't work. <laughs> so, Anyway, um, when you look at a, the escapement and the balance, this is sort of the heart of a watch, uh, you, you have a real uh, whole set of things that can be magnetized. And the, while the hairspring is, is sort of interesting, most people think, well, if the hairspring it gets, it's going to speed up, which is true. But there has been so much work to demagnetize the hairspring that um, it may be one of the fewest of the problems that you have. Uh, some quick examples, uh, Rolex has something called parachrome, and that's made of niobium and chromium. Uh, H. Moser has one made of ne a hairspring called the Straussmann uh, hairspring, niobium and titanium. Uh, there's another one that Swatch and um, Audemars Piguet put together called uh, Nevacron, which is, which is secret. <laughs> now, the interesting thing that they did, uh, Swatch and uh, Audemars Piguet, is that they wanted an alternative to silicon, which is sort of interesting because Swatch, uh, along with, I think, Rolex and Patek Philippe, spent a lot of money on developing a silicon hairspring. So uh, Patek Philippe uses it now, whereas Rolex, I think only in, in one watch, one of the women's watches, they use the uh, silicon. Okay, so uh, let me say this right at the outset. Two things. First of all, you really can't beat silicon for a non-magnetic material. That's one thing. Second of all, uh, I won't buy a watch with silicon. There's nothing wrong with it, but I, I really, it loses a sense of the kinds of watches that we like to collect. That's all. I mean, and they're just, that's the way it is. And I've noticed that uh, Patek Philippe uh, quit bragging about the fact that their hairsprings have silicon in them, so maybe they'll change. Who knows? But when we look at this picture, uh, the hairspring is only one thing that can be magnetized. The escape wheel, the uh, balance wheel, the uh, pallet fork, any number of things. And they mentioned the only thing that can't be magnetized in this picture are the pallets themselves. They're, they're made out of rubies, uh, artificially created, but nevertheless, they have nothing. So we're going to take a look at um, how how we go about demagnetizing a watch. And I, I have uh, two demagnetizers here. I've unplugged them both so I don't electrocute myself <laughs> or, or screw up my watch. This is the first one. This is a little more expensive than the second one I'm going to show you. Uh, basically what you do, you put your watch in into this area. You don't touch the sides and you hold this down and then you slowly pull it out to about a meter. I have no idea why they do it that way, but that's the way it's done. Um, and I, earlier today, I had a I had a watch that was magnetized, and I've been trying to demagnetize it. I stuck it in this guy, and it gave it the whammy, and there's nothing magnetized anymore, and it's keeping perfect time. So it 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 does work, and it can uh, it can happen. Um, now the other one, and this is this is one, I suppose I would recommend. You got to be careful with this one, though. Uh, if you touch the sides, it will magnetize it. There's some things 
some reasons that people want to magnetize things. For example, you might want to put a screwdriver in and touch the side and that'll magnetize it and you can pick up screws with it and <laughs> screw them in, I guess. Now, uh, this other one, this was my first one uh, that I had. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a very inexpensive one. And what, what is done with this one is that you basically do the same thing. You hold the watch over it, you push down the button, and you slowly raise it off here. Now, this one, I had to do work it several times for it to work at all. Uh, I mean, if you just do it once, you're probably not going to demagnetize it. Uh, but they do work. Uh, you have to be patient with these, and you might have to do it several times. But I, I found out that they do work. At first, I didn't think they worked at all. But if your watch, like I said, most people think, well, if it's uh, running slow, that can't be a mag uh, it can't be magnetized. Yes, it can be if it runs too slow. There was an article that talked about the hairspring and the hairspring magnetized would make it run too fast. And so people think that's the only way it can do. But when, we, when you look at the elements that can be magnetized around the uh, balance wheel, you can see that it, <laughs> it'll, it can slow things down as well. Anyway, uh, that's what I wanted to say about mag magnetiz magnetization. The good news is, is that you, you can get one of these tools and save a lot of money. You're not going to have to save, send it into the manufacturer. So if you run into too slow or too fast, Try demagnetizing it before you send it into the uh, watchmaker. Let me know what you think. It's an invitation to subscribe if you'd like. Until next time, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection.